everybody. Another edition of For the Cheers presented by Michelob Ultra. I'm Carter Augustine and I am very pleased today to be joined by Jacob Peterson. Uh, you might know him from his days with Sporting KC or throughout his 14-year MLS career. I know him from being a, a darn good color commentator on the SKC broadcast uh, this, starting this season. What's up, Jacob? Thanks for joining. What's up, Carter? Thanks for having me, man. It's good to see your face. Good to see your face. Just talking to you about, uh, you've been talking to your three-year-old daughter a lot, so I'm, I'm glad I can maybe uh, provide some respite here. Yes, having uh, to talk to a three-year-old all day, uh, I said it to you earlier, but any adult human interaction is very welcome right now, so I'm, gl I'm glad to be on here with you. Well, we'll start with maybe the most adult of uh, human actions here. Cheers, I to open it. Cheers, man. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you're you're game for for the cheers here today. Um, it's been kind of cool getting to know you over the past few months. Unfortunately, obviously, we've had to break it up a little bit. Um, but I guess I want to start somewhere uh, that maybe you've ha been asked a thousand times. But the answer nickname um, one: Do you care for it or did not not like it? Or and then two. Do you remember kind of when it started and like how you became aware of uh, the cult following of the answer? Yeah, um, let's see here. Well, I wouldn't say I am as against it as someone else's to previous nicknames that they've had. I won't throw anybody under the bus here, but uh, at first uh, I didn't love it. Um, I didn't really know too much about it. I think most kind of how it all started was, or how I came to find out, find out about it was guys in the locker room started saying stuff and then uh, it kind of spiraled from there. And, and I thought at, at least originally that it was a, uh, not a, not a derogatory term, but just a, uh, not necessarily a positive uh, nickname. Yeah. Uh, but as uh, the years have gone on and I've gotten in more than a few uh, yelling matches with teammates for calling me that, uh, especially during during trainings or, or in the locker room or whatever, uh, that now it's I've embraced it. It is what it is. Um, I'm trying to spin it as best as I can. Um, but look, at, no matter what, um, I think it's better that that there's a nick name out there that then there's not um because at least you're you're ruffling some feathers or, or you're doing something uh with your life so hey it's 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 fine with me now i'd say maybe six years ago I, it was not the best but uh i'm all for the answer now hey that makes sense to me man and i think it comes from a, a place of love too so i'm glad that uh i'm glad that you're on board with it um Take me back to growing up. How did you get into soccer? Uh, Michigan, huge, uh, I think, history in terms of producing soccer players. How, how did young Jacob Peterson get involved? Yeah, so I grew up in Portage, Michigan, which for those that, that don't know, it's in the uh, southwest um, corner of Michigan. Uh, I would do uh, the hand, the old Michigander hand. Let's see. Uh, so you got Detroit over here. He's usually uh, back in the day was like at, at the bars and whatnot, like where you'd say you're from. So I, I'm from like this area over here. Okay. Um, West side, which uh, to be honest, it's not a uh, huge soccer hotbed, um, but there were some players. Uh, Eric Alexander played in MLS for a lot of years. Uh, Lindsay Tarpley played uh, the U.S. national team. Uh, she's from Portage as well. And then uh, Brandon Bai, who now plays defender for uh, New England. He's also from Portage. So there's some there. Um, but as far as like a major city, like a Kansas City or Detroit, uh, there's not as much. So for me, once uh, – I mean, I played every sport growing up. In Michigan, you play hockey. That's kind of like the main sport that you play. My, my dad played – uh, baseball. He played minor league baseball for the Oakland A's organization um, for two or three years. 
Um, so I played baseball, played hockey, played soccer, basketball, you know, kind of um, all the things um, growing up. And then at a certain point, you kind of have to, if you want to make it to the next level in, in Portage on, on the west side of the state, you have to go over to the east side of the state and, and play in Detroit. Uh, so that's what I did when I was, let's see, 13. Um, so seventh grade is when I kind of had to make the choice. All right, what sport do you want to continue playing all of these or do you want to focus on one? Um, which I think it broke my dad's heart a little bit because he was hoping that I could, you know, make it to the majors, which, which he never did. Um, I, there was no chance though. Uh, I am nothing like my dad. My, my dad was a power hitter, um, a big, a bigger guy. Um, and I am certainly not that I, I'm more like my mom who was a uh, sprinter in college, uh, Michigan state and then at Western. So I, I'm more, I took more uh, on her side of the family. Um, but once I went over to Detroit, I played with Michigan Wolves, a pretty good club there. Uh, and then uh, from there, let's see, I was 16 when I was selected for the under-17 national team uh, and went down to, to live in Bradenton, Florida, and, and finished out my high school uh, years there, which, which was certainly an experience. Were you able to watch a lot of soccer growing up? Because I, I know personally there wasn't a whole lot to watch in Iowa. I catch a random MLS game every once in a while, but – um, did you, did you watch any particular players or any teams growing up? No, I didn't. Um, that's something that kids these days or kids, even, uh, not kids, but I guess not now I, I refer to them as kids, but I mean, guys who <laughs> were 25, um, now in the league, um, there are just so many more options right out there. Uh, I think the, the only game that I can remember watching when I was a kid, and this is probably until I moved down to, to Florida uh, when I was 16, was the 19, I think it was the 99 when Man, Man United won the treble um, against Bayern Munich late. That was the only soccer game, and it was only because one of my friends was a big soccer, or his dad was a big soccer fan, and he lived right next to our middle school, I think, and, and Right when class got out, we went over there. Might have even left early. I can't remember, and and went over and watched it. But that's probably the only game that I watched on TV. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't know who the best players in the world were. I I didn't know anything. Which now it, it's crazy to think that now because soccer is everywhere. It's on TV, and I just think that has such a big impact. You know, yeah, you play soccer when I grew up, but you know we were playing baseball. Um, or street hockey a lot of the times in the summer. Um, and those were the athletes that, that we kind of looked up to. It wasn't the soccer players. Um, and nowadays it's so different, uh, which is great. Uh, I love it. But, I mean, at MLS, I went to maybe a few Columbus Crew games. Um, but really, I mean, the, in Michigan at that time, there were, there were really – it was hard to find a game of soccer, especially as a kid. And when my parents didn't know anything about it, uh, it was certainly hard for me. I was in the same shoes, man. I, it, you needed a friend's dad who had the special cable package. Um, these kids these days are spoiled. They get so much soccer. So spoiled. I think it's going to help the, the talent, honestly, because, I, I mean, you growing up, we watch football, basketball, and you know a spin move because you've seen a thousand football games. And I don't know if you, you think the same way, but I just think, the kids being able to watch all these players um, in, in modern day USA TV. I think that's really awesome for the future of American soccer. Absolutely. I, I think that is such a, a difference in my generation. At, at least it, it would have been great to see, you know, guys who I looked up to once I was old enough to uh, Kobe Jones, um, Brian McBride, even like the Alexi Lawless, like the 1994 World Cup team, like that, that type of team. But like those, those games on TV, like you could not see them. Like I remember we, we went to the 94 World Cup in uh, Sil Pontiac Silverdome, uh, RIP, uh, great, great uh, venue there. <laughs> and uh, 
it was uh, Sweden versus Russia, I think. Um, and, and Peterson, so we're Swedes, so we were rooting for Sweden. I think uh, Martin Dahlin, I think that's his name. I might be butchering that for, for the Swedes out there. But, um, you know, the, it was just such a, uh, a rare thing. And you don't have that example. Um, yeah. That's why I think there's so few, you know, true number 10s in, in the U.S. because you, you don't play that pickup ball. You don't, you don't play uh, just out in the street. You don't juggle. You, you don't work on the, those little things. I had zero soccer awareness uh, until I went down to 16 or, or until I went down to Florida when I was 16. And at that point, it's almost too late. And it's like, all right, I'm doing things that I should have been doing when I was five and I'm 16 years old. And yes, at that point you can get away with it because at that time we were more athletic than, than other countries and, and, you know, you kind of you were more fit and your tactics were okay. But the, the awareness of the game, the feel for it, I mean, in tight spaces, and that was something my entire career that, that I struggled with is being comfortable under pressure that that's just not something that that I liked and I think a big part of that was because I didn't have that experience growing up yeah well one thing you didn't struggle with was winning trophies throughout your entire career you did that I think as a youth am I correct and then into college and then of course in MLS um this is going to put you on the spot is there a trophy of yours that's your favorite stick that sticks out in your mind all the way back to, to when you're just first starting playing? Oh, man. Um, I think MLS Cup 2013, just because of what it – and see, uh, my, my only real decoration uh, over here. Um, I think that – I mean, that's the, the pinnacle of U.S. soccer, right, it is, is to win MLS Cup. So – that's my number one, um, but I think the 2012 Open Cup, I've said it before, that, that that was, I don't know what it was about that game. It was just uh, such a memorable experience, uh, bringing a, a championship, the first championship to sporting um, in, the, in their uh, new version. Um, but, man, winning two national championships at college is still uh, – is right there because college is different than professional yet. Yeah, and sporting locker room, I've said this many times, it is an exception to the rule as far as professional sports teams go. Everybody was close in sporting's locker room, but that's usually not the case. But in college, you win it with your, literally your 30 closest friends and guys that you, know, you, you study with, you, you go out to the bars with or, or whatever it, it's like that whole that all-encompassing type of thing um those two national championships it's probably mls cup 12 2012 uh open cup and then right there are those two uh national championships with iu yeah i bet i mean you got a ton ton of trophies to pick from man that's got to feel pretty good uh all right, so you were you were in the league for 14 years. So you played for a few different teams. What's your favorite MLS city? Because I know, personally, I think the league has some fantastic cities. Maybe a couple stinkers that I, I won't say, but um, I'm curious. I, I love quite a few. It's a really tough decision. All right, so favorite city as in visiting, like just from a tourist standpoint or like playing there and that? Bye. We can separate them. We'll do favorite to visit and favorite soccer. All right. Um, well, I'm going to separate Casey from this, even though I, I've been real honest with about this before I came to sporting in 2012. And Kansas City was one of the worst places to come to, whether it was playing at Arrowhead uh, or playing at Cab. It was just, it was not a, a great experience. Now, if I came here, at this point where it's at Sporting Park. Uh, I never played at Sporting, well, I never played at Sporting Park as a visitor before I came here. So I didn't kind of have that, that experience. Um, so I'll separate Casey, but I love Denver. Um, it might be 
because that was where I was drafted to Colorado. I love the city. I love the mountains. I love the weather. I, I love the just overall kind of feeling that you're, you get when you're there. Uh, it's also where my wife and I kind of, our relationship kind of moved from this college fling to like, all right, now, now we're the serious type of thing. Um, so there's that vibe, but like soccer wise, Colorado's terrible. It's, it's, I mean, not, not a great place to go. Uh, visiting Toronto is one of my favorite cities to visit just as a tourist, but I also hated living there. So it's, it's a very, it's a strange thing. Um, but all of that, I love playing in Portland. I think Portland's probably my favorite place to go play. And I think Denver is my favorite place to go visit just nice. because it means so much to me personally. Yeah. I love Denver without the, the personal connections. And uh, I'll actually agree with you in terms of away trips, Portland. They, that's, a, that's a great uh, stadium right in the middle of the downtown. Um, yeah. What's your what's your worst, Carter? You know we don't have to uh, we don't have to. Um, Houston's going to be in the in the running. I'll just say it. I'm not a big fan. Uh, what's what's your what's your worst then? Salt Lake. Okay, that was quick. Salt Lake. I really dislike Salt Lake. Um, I it's beautiful, um, but I just really dislike like Salt Lake. I think it's a combination of playing for sporting when those rival that rivalry was really on and then being in Colorado when the Rocky Mountain Cup those early days it was still a rivalry even though lately I mean Salt Lake's kind of owned that but everything about Salt Lake to me when I go there I just I even though it's a beautiful city and I should really like it uh, I just I don't have I don't have good feelings getting off the plane in Salt Lake. I'll say I'll say this: a couple of college roommates and I uh, take a camping trip every year, and we went to the, uh, the Great Salt Lake one, one time, and very disappointed. Very salty, a lot of bugs. So, and uh, they don't lie. It's Great Salt Lake. It was very salty. Um, all right, so I got one last one for you. Um, we talked about your distinguished 14-year career. It means you played with a lot of good players. What would be your five-a-side team of your teammates that you've played with throughout your life? All right. So clarification, five-a-side is me and you, five I, other field players or four other field players, or is it just five I'm players. coaching them and it's five of them? You're coaching the five players. Um, you know, you can have a goalie if you want. But a lot of people don't because they, they'll just have someone kind of drop back in, in, in front of the, the small goal there. Um, right. So this one was actually – and you did, you did give me a heads up on this, this one. And I will say that here. That's a tough one. I don't know if I've had as much fun going through this. So I, I, I've got a little uh, – Got my little notes here. Okay. I didn't just pick uh, my first team. I made my my uh, top three teams that I would have. Oh, you're three deep. I mean, this was uh, – honestly, this was one of the most uh, enjoyable uh, experiences I've had, especially in these past uh, eight weeks or so. So thank you, Carter, for posing this to me earlier because if you would have posed this to me on the spot, it would have been a disaster. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll start by saying my, my first team then. Tim Mulia and goal, Matt Beasler, Michael Parkhurst, Pablo Mastroani, Miguel Almiron, and Chris Wondolowski. That's okay. my, my top one. My second team is Brad Gazan, Ike Opara, Drew Moore, Graham Zusi, Kyle Beckerman, and Joseph Martinez. My third team is Stefan Fry. Seth Sinovic, Jeff Laurentowitz, Chance Myers. And this is where I was, it was tough. It was a tie between Paulo Nagamura, who sporting fans will appreciate, uh, and Medi Bellucci, which a lot of people out there would say that's, wait, I, I get a lot of these guys 
Med Medi was the best practice player that I've ever played played with, and I, I don't think it's close. I think he is he is incredible in trainings. And I, I've told you this personally. I think if he could have played the exact same way that he played in trainings as he did in the game, he would be at Barcelona. He was incredible how good he was. That's why I had Medi there, but it wasn't full out because I wanted to give Naga some love because I would fight with Naga on any five-a-side team. Um, and the forward on that team was Dom Dwyer. Yeah. And that's leaving out. I mean, I have, a, <laughs> I have all these guys that like Dwayne Di Rosario, MVP, Christian Gomez, oh. an MVP, Clint Mathis, Benny made my list. Torsten Frings, who, while he came over here, he wasn't great. Yeah, handball. That's the worst. <laughs> handball. But like, his career was great. Yeah. There was three goalkeepers of the year that I left out. John Bush, Jimmy Nielsen, and Joe Cannon, who won it twice. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on, but, like, it's just it, – it was, it was fun. I, I thank you for that. Um, and it made me uh, – feel lucky that a very average journeyman player could play with so many players who are vastly more talented than I am. So it was actually a lot of fun. So thank you for that, Carter. You got a couple of good squads there. I'd like to see a tournament uh, of the teams that you, uh, that you got there. I would, I would love a tournament of this. I think this would be a, a little round robin. It would be uh, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know who would, Joseph, Joseph and uh, Kyle Beckerman on the same team, though. Joseph Martinez and Kyle Beckerman, they might fight each other halfway through. So I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know who would win this one. But, I mean, I'm saying Bees and Parkey at the back. Uh, I mean, that's about as steady Eddie as they come, which is exactly what you want from your center backs. Yeah. I don't know. It, it would be a fun one. Yeah. Do, I, I've heard a few guys say some of the things they miss most uh, once they retire are the 5v2s and, like, the small-sided games that you would play in training. Is that something that, that you miss as well? Yeah, 100% 5v2 is the best thing about trainings. Um, with sporting, it was always Fridays, day before a game was, was the, the 5v2 session. Um, by far the best training of the week or the, the best – 20 minutes of the week or whatever. If, uh, you know, I've talked to some guys who, who have retired as well. Um, they, they actually got to retire where I was forced into retirement. I wish I could just have like one more 5v2 training session and that's it. <laughs> just maybe an hour of 5v2 uh, and then we're good. But yeah, I mean, that's, as Benny Failhaber said when, when he retired, running is hard. It, it's not great, uh, especially as you get older, but you could play 5v2 till you're 60, and it's still a great time. That's awesome. Well, uh, this was a great time. I'll tell you that much. Thanks for uh, joining for the cheers, Jacob Peterson. Appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we're, we're calling games here pretty soon. Obviously, safety is the, the biggest thing. But, uh, you know, I, I, I miss MLS. I don't know about you. Uh, first off, 100% agree. Safety is number one. And I hope they can figure out a, a plan to keep uh, players and, and staff and, and everybody safe first and foremost. But yeah, I, I miss miss MLS. Uh, I want some some of it in my life, and I feel like we were just kind of, you know, very selfishly um, standpoint here. I, I feel like we were getting on a roll. I was really enjoying enjoying the time, learning from you guys. Um, but hey. Like I said, safety is number one, but hopefully we can figure it out here and get some soccer going on. Yeah. Cheers to that, man.